I'm a Moper guy, and I've got two Chevys in my shop and a 327 on the dyno. Headers versus exhaust manifolds. So let's get it started. Welcome to Nick's Garage, and I'm your host, Nick. All right, we got something special here today. We've got a 66 Impala convertible red on red with a 327 engine. My friend George brought it in because he wanted to overhaul the engine, just do a simple refresh or just uh, clean up the engine and uh, get it tuned so it could get it running good because it was a tired 327. So, but while you have the car here, you also insist on getting some chrome done. So we have to strip some chrome and then send out the front seat to get more cushion into it like it's uh, right here. It's very soft and George is a heavy guy. So, you know, he said he wanted to put some more padding in it. So Ivan is going to take care of this. And I've got also Richard here. We've got a complete electrical system. Richard, how are you doing? Not bad yourself. And Richard is going to replace all the wiring from head, from, should say, from the uh, bumper to bumper on the whole car. Rich, so Richard, how are you doing with this? We're taking the old parts out, putting new parts in, and we're gonna do connections. I see you got a lot of wirings there to do. Ah, yeah, that's not bad. <laughs> okay, I see you love electrical, so good luck with it, Richard. Thank you anyways. Thank you, sir. So we're gonna start from the headlights to the tail lights, dash, everything that's connected with electrical from uh, courtesy lights, everything. So George bought the whole kit, so he insisted that we have it put on. We also had all the moldings removed, like so. He said, you know what, Nick, take out the moldings. I want to get them all polished, just like you did Eugene's charger. So you wanted to do the same. So we did that too. I always had a few convertibles in my life. And you know what, one of my favorite colors is a red car with a red interior, just like this Impala. And uh, you know, I always wanted to build a Cuda, a 70 Cuda, red on red. And this is what it would look like. Okay, so this is an Impala, but this would be my favorite colors, red on red, just like this Impala. Yes, I always had plans to build that car at one time. I never did. But you know, that was one of my fascinations to build one of those cars. But instead, I've always liked the movie Vanishing Point, so I built the Vanishing Point Challenger, Kowalski. Up wow. with the this, old. This is the old wiring? Yes, sir. So here we go, out with the old and in with the new. Okay, so you see this is the glass type fuses. These are going out and now what we're installing a new fuse box which is a push-on type of uh, modern fuses. Here it is, American Auto Wire. That's the company that makes it. You now it's got modern fuses like so. They didn't exist like this in 1966. But these are a lot easier to read, a lot easier to install. And you know what? Or away with the old wiring because you know what? When a car gets old, all the wiring gives you nothing but headaches and troubles. So George was right, just replace the whole thing. I got the kit, go through the whole car, change everything, and keep it simple. Then there's another classic, for example, like the Charger 500. This is a restoration of what you call a matching number car. You want to go into more details, and this is where you buy the wiring that is exactly made the way Chrysler made it. So this is what we bought for this car. We bought the exact same wiring, copies of the Chrysler uh, way it was designed, and we put it in. And it works, it's also simple, except <clears throat> the uh, harness on the dash on this car was pretty clean, so we kept the same harness. If you take this one here, for example, so many people have tampered with it, that damaged it, extended wires, and did so many things. And this car, it was a little bit different. Nobody molested with this car. This one here, a lot of people molested. So that is the reason why we're changing everything on this car. And this one here was more simple. We bought a rear tail light harness, engine harness, headlight harness, left the same original dash, Harness in the car, and it's gonna all work perfect. It's the right part for the job for every car. Not only that, I, I have this engine, which I had it on the dynamometer. I built it, and uh, we had it running with the headers last week. But George told me that he wants to get the engine with the exhaust manifolds installed to put into the car. So I have the engine on the dyno. We've taken off the headers a few days ago. We finally got the exhaust manifolds bolted on and I did not get it running yet. So I'm just gonna go get it started, make a few tests. And I wanted to see the horsepower loss, headers versus manifolds on a 327 basic engine with the four barrel setup.
Let's see how it goes. So let's go in the dining room. Here she is. He's got a set of exhaust models that belongs to a 1970 Camaro. It is a 66 Impala, but we got these manifolds. We had the motor running a few days ago with these headers, one and three quarters. But my client insisted that he doesn't want headers on the car, he wants manifolds. So I ended up installing these manifolds for him. We got a couple of pipes made. Uh, well, this was the original one on the car. The other side we had made, we put an O2 sensor on it. And we're also running a 650 carburetor, which belongs to George. And uh, I made a test with the headers, and now I want to make a test with the exhaust manifolds. Well, I can't wait to see this one. Okay, what kind of horsepower are we gonna lose on this? Well, let's see. Let's get it warmed up. I know it's gonna be loud because the exhaust is open right here. And if it doesn't matter, we're just gonna make a few tests. After all, it was just a little refresh. We did a good valve job on it. We went 40 over pistons on it, flat top. He's got a little cam with a 480 lift, two, 232 duration on it. It's a hydraulic flat top it. With a U-plane high rise intake manifold, with a 650 vacuum secondaries, with a flamethrower distributor, like a Petronic setup, and uh, I'm ready to get started. You know, these cars are supposed to make us happy, first and foremost, because this is what you want. Some people want original 100%, some people don't. Sometimes you can change a few things, sometimes for the better, sometimes for the worse, or whatever. But George is a very simple guy. What makes it work, he stay with it, and he's happy. Okay, let's get it started. Let's go. Main switch, battery charger, and the water line. Let's open the computer. All right. You know, it's been a while since I had a 327 on the dyno. You know, it's an old engine, 1966. They were pulling, what, roughly 300 horsepower from the factory, or actually less, a lot less than 300. 68, wow, I don't have 66. You know, let's take a simple 327 four barrel. 250 horsepower. Okay, let's say roughly 250, okay, so maybe 250. I know in the Corvettes they were rated 300 horsepower. You know, it's not a Corvette engine, but uh, it is an Impala. Let's do it. You know, I, I, uh, the 327 is a very popular engine in the, the Chevrolet. I remember I went to see a car with my dad many, many, many years ago. It was a Chevy 2 Nova, 1967. It was equipped with a 327. Was it factory? I'm not so sure. It was a used car we were going to go buy back in 1973. We went to look at the car. We took it for a drive around the block. We were interested in buying the car. I remember being a blue interior, silver car, 1967 Chevy 2 Nova. And it was a nice car. I remember it was an automatic car with a 327. And then in the end, we came back to make a deal to buy the car. Another salesman approached us and said, you guys, I'm sorry, but don't road test this car. It's because it sold before I even got to it. So I didn't get to buy that car, that's for sure. Oh, well, who knows? Maybe if I would have bought that car, I would have been a Chevy man today. Who knows? On the way back home, we uh, got off at the Exxon on the carry, and the first thing we saw there was a Chrysler dealership. So you know what we did? We pulled over, we went in the dealership, and at the end, I ended up with a brand new 73 Duster with a big six cylinder. And here I am today with Mopars. My father used to call the Chevys Chevroletta. That's a Greek way of saying Chevrolet. Chevroletta. Maybe that's why I say Chevrolet. Okay, what do we do here now? Gotta put the info in. All right, here we go. Okay, we're gonna start at 2800 RPM and finish it off at 6000 RPM. At 300 RPMs per second. Okay, this should be a little screamer, you guys. Okay, I just wanted to mention also that uh, we made the test earlier with headers. I just wanted to tell you, 359.9, or should I say 360 foot-pounds of torque at 4,500 RPM, and 335 horsepower at 5,700 RPM. And that's what the results were with the headers. And now we're gonna run it with manifolds and see what we're gonna get. And the camshaft, I was said earlier, it's a 232 at 50 duration, 110 lobe separation, 
and the lift is 480 both intake and exhaust on a hydraulic flat tap in. Okay, let's warm it up. Here we go. It's 160 degrees. Now we'll turn on the water pump. We'll heat sink the block. Warm it up. Because if you get the water pump running, it's gonna stay cold for a long time. So you know what? Just turn it on and off, on and off, and control the temperature. And now it's gonna stabilize. All right. Let me bring the RPM down.
gets the 327 Chevy purring like a kitten on his dyno. But then he sees something he doesn't like. valve covers is coming into contact with the intake. It's causing a small leak to run along the side of the gasket and down the engine. I think we are ready to shoot it. All right. Let's go for it, you guys. Are we ready? Here we go. Let's hear this 327 scream. Still the 300s. Okay, except we're uh, we've gone to 6 to 100 RPM, and uh, wow, carburetor is looking fine. Let's check the air fuel ratio. Air fuel ratio is on the money. It's good. 12.9, 13.0 horsepower. We got up to 300 horsepower. Check out the graph. Let's see, what do we got a stroke number? 360 before. We got 320 right now. At 4400, 4500. Okay, same thing. Oh, you know what? Make another pull. I haven't, I've just, I played around with the timing, but I didn't play with that on the manifolds yet. But in the meantime, I think we got an oil leak somewhere on the right hand side. Let's go take a look. I see something there. Ah, uh, just as I thought. Valve cover. Yep. That valve cover is leaking right back here. Ah, uh, you know what? We're going to have to get another gasket. I think we need a thicker gasket in this situation. All right, that's an easy fix. It's on the top. It's not a rear seal. So that's not bad. That's all good. Okay. We've lost something like 30 horsepower with the manifolds. Horsepower, we're in the 335 range, and right now we are 302. So we lost like 33 horsepower in the manifolds. But then again, look at this little tube, you guys. It's a two inch pipe. A little two inch pipe. On the car, we're gonna put a new exhaust system on it, which is probably gonna be a two and a half. But in the meantime, this is what I've got here right now. I'm checking to see what uh, the exhaust leaks on the manifolds themselves. But you know what? We'll make another test back to back and see what it does. Sounds great, doesn't it? Screams up to 6,000, no sweat. Check this out. Or is this one ready to pop out? Why? That's funny. 
Oh, wow. Oh, by the way, this is a breather and an oil fill cap at the same time. So see, it's got no PCV valve. It's got no breather. The breather is built right here, and this is where you fill up the oil. And are we going to connect the PCV valve? We don't know yet. It depends on my client. We have to make provisions on the valve cover to connect the PCV valve. But in the meantime, I'm not going to do that until he decides what to do when it's installed in the car. Okay, let's make another test. Here we go. O2 sensor on. Click the fan on. Look at this thing, it's still making power at 6,000 RPM. Such a small engine. Still making power, pretty impressive. We have 320 foot-pounds of torque at 4,400 RPM. You know, this is not a racer, just a cruiser. But it's got a little cam in it, but it is what it is. Okay, here we go. Oh, George, you know what? I'm gonna try something. I'm gonna yeah, just the absorber. Yeah, I'm trying to adjust the absorber because it's supposed to be in the uh, yellow zone when, it's, when I load the engine. I like to get it within tolerance. Let's see if we get it right now. Here we go. Should work. Here we go. have an exhaust setup for the exhaust manifolds. You know, if you're gonna start making exhaust systems for every different manifold that comes into my shop, I'll never gonna finish. All right, here we go. We just made another pull. We had a running at 176 degrees Fahrenheit, which is pretty cool. We're still stuck at 320 foot-pounds of torque at 4,500 RPM. And the horsepower is up to 308.2 at 5,500 RPM. So really, 25, just a, just a little bit over 25 horsepower we lost with the exhaust valve. You know, it's not really that bad. Not even a 10% loss. And you know what? It is what it is. It is good. You know, it's just a cruising car. That's what he's using it for. We are going to stay with the manifolds. But just to guys let you know, the header has improved of about almost 25 horsepower more. And, uh, and the torque numbers, 360 versus 320. 
we lost 40 foot pounds of torque. So we lost more torque than horsepower. But it doesn't matter, it still works. Anyways, you guys, there it is. There's the 66 Impala 327. George, if you're watching, there's your engine. So let's finish off with all the colorful wiring, clean the engine bay, reinstall the 327 in, put all the chrome trim back on, and take it for a drive. And you guys, thanks for watching us here on Nick's Garage, and stay tuned for next time. Thank you. And you guys, if you look down below the video, we have a whole bunch of merchandise that you guys can buy. So whatever you like, buy it, love it, wear it, and enjoy it. And help spread the word of Nick's Garage. And if you have some time, check out our Patreon page. We have extra content and you guys can watch it and take it from there. And we'll see you next time.